Ershan, assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. I'm doing good. Fezan, how are you? I'm very well. So Ersha here, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, from my Fulbright cohort. That is 2015 cohort, and um, she was one of the one of the prominent st- uh, ones I remember. Not as prominent as Abdul Muiz, perhaps, but one of the <laughs> active ones, I would say. So yeah. I think many, most of the people in our cohort knew her. Um, so how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing really well, Fazan. Alhamdulillah. Things uh, uh, right now within this lockdown, as good as they can be. So that's, I, I would say, the major uh, experience happening these days. But apart from that, things have been things have been well. Yeah. True. I mean, most of us has have not have not experienced anything like that. Like our parents never experienced anything like that. Mm-hmm. My father was telling me that it was our great grandfather who saw the Spanish flu. And mm-hmm. after that, it is the only event that has gone to this extent. So, exactly. H- H- I think we're getting an opportunity to pass this knowledge on to the next generation. True. True. So the things is- that we had to go through. <laughs> yeah, this will be our phrase, like to our kids. I mean, you are always tied up and you don't want to study. We went through the flu. We went through the yeah. coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Many stories in making, but many of them are not very happy stories, unfortunately. So I hope everybody's safe at your end. And I hope that everybody uh, is safe. We have been um, adhering to the quarantine requirements. Um, I won't say it's super easy because my father, he's a businessman. So our household also depends on a business which was required to be shut down for a very long period of time. So um, it's definitely hard and you have to do a very careful dance between you know keeping yourself safe, but at the same time, making sure that you're making a living as well. So Alhamdulillah, my family is still in, in a much better shape to go through this quarantine for maybe a month, a month and a half or two months, but I really feel for the people uh, who have to manage on daily wages and who've had to go through this experience. I hope it, it has been quickly and we, we emerge as better citizens, more sensible citizens, more empathetic people. So, Ersa, you have been back since 2017, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does does the nostalgia still hit you like those memories that we made at Fulbright? <laughs> it most definitely does. I don't think that's an experience that you can get over very soon in your life, uh, especially because life in Pakistan and life in USA are extremely very different. And I want to say especially for women, you know, the quality of life is extremely different. So uh, being a woman, not exactly having the same freedom that I had in USA, it constantly keeps you missing a lot of that, uh, that you've experienced. That is so true. And that is something I've observed too, being, being the other gender. I have now understood many things that were totally, uh, I wouldn't say oblivious, mm-hmm. but they were hidden to me. Like, yeah. they so were in a blind but- spot. Yeah, and it, it hits you really. Like you feel silly not observing them before. They were right there. Mm-hmm. So I don't, yeah. um, not totally, but I kind of understand <laughs> you. Um, and, and that is a big deal, uh, Fezan. I would really appreciate that you were um, willing to acknowledge these things or learn uh, from the women who were speaking about them around you because unfortunately a lot of people still tend to dismiss them because they can't see it instead of um, taking that opinion as an observation you know so I really appreciate that. Thank you so much and uh, I, I, I still feel that I have a long way to go in understanding this but I definitely am at a better place right now and I hope I get better. So coming back to your experiences, yeah. uh, I, I remember you talking about the difference of academics. Do you want to go there first or mm-hmm. do you want to talk about your journey? Let's talk about your journey first. So how did you get sure. into Fulbright and how did you get placed and where did you get placed? 
So um, I I applied for the Fulbright scholarship um, mostly because I was looking for and for a new opportunity and to be able to you know get outside of Pakistan, explore new things, and that's when I came to know about the Fulbright scholarship and um, it was. Uh, within two weeks, honestly, that I prepared my application, I started for the test, I took it on the last day, and that's how I submitted my application. So my personal motive or motivation never was that I want to, you know, go for a master's. It was just to have whatever opportunity I can have to get outside of Pakistan. A kind of so, um, <laughs> how it started. Yeah. Sorry? I mean, you're not alone. Many people, yeah. including me to some extent, uh, had the same motive. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. So, um, and you're right, a lot of people do sort of apply because of those motivations. But uh, when I got there, when I got the Fulbright and I got to meet the cohort, I also discovered that a large part of the cohort was actually really focused on the academic part of it. They, they knew what they wanted to do. They were really focused on their area of research, for example, or really, you know, had all the information that was required uh, uh, to choose a program for themselves, things that I had absolutely no idea about at the time, you know. Cool. So, so did you find it different, difficult? Um, exciting for what what were academics like and and you went to university in Buffalo the sunny Buffalo yes university at Buffalo New York that's why that's where I got uh, placed ultimately and, and, and so sorry I'm, I'm cutting you off your master's warrants uh, what was your master's in? Uh, it was in it, my master's was in structural engineering so again ah. that's very one of the most uh, <laughs> difficult branches of civil engineering there is. Um, yeah, so I got placed at SUNY Buffalo and uh, it has one of the most difficult uh, structural engineering programs uh, throughout the USA. So now imagine, I, I went in thinking this is just going to be fun and games and then I get placed at such a difficult you know, program, and that is where imposter syndrome hit me real, real hard. Like, I cannot I, honestly, now that I talk to people about my experience, I tell them, you know, I had a lot of fun while, while I was in the USA, and my Fulbright experience was great, but my academic experience that was no less than traumatizing for me. <laughs> you know, I started off as this A grade student who, I, I mean, my parents wanted me to go into medical, but uh, I did not want to be a doctor. So of course, my second option as a very good student was just being an engineer. I get into that, I get into a good university. Um, I, am, I ace my program, uh, I graduate, I get a job at one of the top firms, uh, Descon Engineering uh, in, in Lahore. And yet I get to USA and I feel like, what have I done to myself, you know? <laughs> How am I going to manage this? So it was no less than a trauma, honestly. Oh, uh, but did, do you feel like you wasted your two years or did you feel like you discover, rediscovered yourself in those two years? I, I would never say that I wasted those two years. Um, Sure, economically it was hard uh, and I mean, ultimately I got through it, right? So that's also something that can, um, that is a motivation in itself that ultimately I did get through. But uh, the Fulbright experience, apart from what it offers academically, it offers so much, um, so many new opportunities. It offers uh, cultural exposure. It uh, introduces you to people from all different walks of life uh, and you make connections that can help you out of no nowhere sometimes, you know. So, um, and it has also shown me the importance of non-technical um, fields, which is something that we really ignore here in Pakistan, right? And um, 
that in itself i would say has been um has more than made up for any difficulty that i might have faced in mm-hmm. those two years so now that i look back i remember the good parts a lot more than i remember the difficulty that i had at the time wonderful so there's a before we move you back to pakistan and talk about it uh, mm-hmm. let's just quickly compare the academics that you experienced here in uh, nast i believe you went to nast right yes and mm-hmm. then suni buffalo right um so i would say here um how our academics work and and we really laugh about this thing that um i just prepared maybe one or two nights before the exam and and i was able to get through it and that's exactly how it is a lot of information is spoon fed to you a lot of our exams are sort of based on exactly the kind of work that we've done in class so we just have to go through the mechanics of it and not really involve any kind of critical thinking to solve those problems right uh but you go to the usa and you find out that that's not how things are right they expect you to have done your research they expect you to grasp all the concepts in the class and then they present you a question in the exam that is an amalgamation of all three say different classes and you're supposed to figure out which concepts you need to use and then solve those exams and for someone uh, who studied in pakistan i feel like that is something that does not come naturally right we are we are taught from a textbook and we're supposed to reproduce a textbook when we are in school and as we go in university we are just supposed to sort of the same continues in a way you know so uh, that is how i f- i that was how i discovered um, how education is different between pakistan and in usa and what merits uh, the um, educational system from usa has to offer great so before we close this chapter what would be your advice to people who are thinking of applying to fulbright especially who are coming from an engineering background mhm yeah so my advice would be to first of all uh, be very sure that uh, what is it exactly that you want to do you know a lot of us we tend to apply for programs that we feel like we'll get into but not to programs that we feel like we'll be good at or you know we we'll, we we'll, we actually want to pursue so first of all be very sure what is it that you want to do and then look for a program that is suitable with that if like me you want to go there just to have fun um maybe choose a program that is not exactly as complicated as a technical field might be and uh the second option is to be very prepared nonetheless be very prepared when you go there uh you will not be able to survive if you're not giving your 100% in your classes that is expected of you and that is what you will have to do to get through that journey so there is no way that you feel like you'll miss all your classes and still get through so be very very prepared to give it your all so isha you have completed your program you successfully finished your masters and now you have returned to pakistan what happened right. afterwards yeah so i got back to pakistan and uh, initially again job hunt was um, really hard uh, but ultimately i found a position uh, with the infrastructure development authority of punjab uh, under their banner in uh, project management office for the specialized healthcare and medical education department um, which lasted uh, its while but ultimately um, that uh sort of fizzled out because the entire organization was shut down after the elections so that's when i uh, my contract ended and after that um things have been hard since then i'll be honest uh so having been through 
all the experience that I've talked about, I was really coming to a point where I felt like I want to know what is it that I really want to do that would actually make me happy as well. And it's, I think it's been over a year now. And from there to here, I've made the discovery that what I want to do is very different from what I spent maybe, I don't know, about 10 years of my life. In, right? So what I'm currently doing is I started a home baking business. Um, I'm back home here in my city. Uh, which is a small city and does not have this kind of facility uh, before I introduced it. So, um, and, I, and I feel that is something that came from everything that I've experienced on my footbread journey, from making the connections that I've made, uh, from having been through a lot of hardships academically and doing jobs that maybe I was not feeling the happiest in. Uh, and uh, this is this is what's going on, and um, I'd say I'm as surprised as anybody else that that's what I'm doing right now. You know, you're surprised, and I'm impressed, sir. So seriously, I mean, it takes all the courage in the world to do something that you have not studied for, that you really yeah. desire, but perhaps the society will not be supportive very much. Like. You're an engineer, you tum kya kar rahi ho? stuff like that. Exactly. You just went for it. Exactly. You're inspiring yourself. Exactly. Thank you so much, Fezan. <laughs> That's really kind of you. But I really want to add that um, it takes, I, I feel like it takes a while for you to really come to the realization or um, discover your passion in that sense. I, I know that sounds absolutely cliched, but uh before this before i started this before i started doing this i i was one of those people who kept mulling over that question right why don't i have a passion what, what is my passion going to be why do people say that you ultimately just find it one day and then alhamdulillah i did and it had always been in front of me this is not something that i just got up and started doing right i i used to do it for fun my home for my friends and then an opportunity presented itself and because I had learned so much from my previous experience in engineering in Fulbright connecting with different kinds of people that everything just sort of came together right so for anybody who currently feels like they don't fit in where they are or they don't really know what to do or what their passion might be. I'd say just keep on going through this journey that you're going through right now and it will not make sense until it does. So Godspeed to you girl. I, I really you. wish that you succeed in doing whatever you want to do. You get uh, satisfaction in doing what you're doing and uh, you just progress in life and keep inspiring us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fezan. Thank you. And I hope I can see you when I'm back. Uh, so Definitely, yeah. that will be later this year. But anyway, we'll plan something out. Till then, Irsha, have a wonderful evening. It's evening there, right? It's 9 p.m. or something. It's, it's night, not even evening. Uh, so <laughs> so I'll, I'll let you go and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vezan. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.